How about the word pressure, right? I mean, we, we always talk about pressure this time of the playoffs, especially in the Stanley Cup final, but the pressure was on Edmonton to win four, obviously. It's still on them because if they don't, it's done. But do you think more pressure is on Florida now than game four? I, I don't know what you guys think. I don't think there's any pressure on Edmonton now. Zero. That pressure was in game four to not get swept. And, yeah, you could say, oh, there's got to be some pressure. I mean, you could be eliminated tomorrow, you know, in that game. But they're not supposed to do this, right? Like, it's yeah. almost like you're playing with house money now. Now, if you're the Florida Panthers, this is the thing that gets me. I think it's important that your mind doesn't wander. And I'm sure that all those things are being said in the room because, you know what, your family – just got flown across the North continent America. to close this thing out in Edmonton. Didn't happen. So now everybody's back here. Now it's the hype around here. Hey, let's continue this thing. This was an exciting time. We're going to do this at home. This is perfect, blah, blah, blah. If that doesn't happen, now all of a sudden it's going back there. Honestly, I think whoever wins this next game, whoever wins game five for me wins the series. Do, do you fly the Ooh. families back if they, do lose, if they do lose Hot game take. five Whoosh. for game six? I mean... I, or do I don't know. What do you do? Home. Do you say we tried that? I, I, I don't you know. You fly yeah. the families back. There's the hot take. You fly hot the take. families back. they got to be there in game six if they. I mean, uh, 180. I mean, if I, okay, put just... it this way. If they fly them back, if I'm on the Edmonton Oilers and I know that there's another plane coming in, be like, boys, here we go again. Oh, my God. We have an opportunity to ruin 250 people yep. in their fan base. Like, Twice. this is it. This is yeah. it. And you look for, like, isn't that the locker room? Isn't that the playoffs? 100%. Though? You look for yeah. anything and everything to use as an advantage. There, 100%. We, we were all in Edmonton, and we saw that game. We heard that crowd. If this goes back to Edmonton, there is no chance they're winning in that barn. So they need this game big time because that building was raucous. It was, they the fans put forth a coordinated and consistent it was wild. All night yelling and screaming. It was insane. It was, it was wild. And, it was awesome. and Florida's, you know, Florida's loud. The, this building's been great all playoffs. And so, but again, the pressure has just shifted all over to Florida. They need this game because once you get to game seven, you know the spoiler as it's well. And flip. it's a coin flip. Yep. Well, so. here's my thing. I'm never going to count out the Florida Panthers, even if they lose game five, just because of what they've shown throughout this year and throughout the playoffs last year. I think I think we're going to see a really good effort out of Florida in Game 5. I think they understand that they may have let one slip. Mm -hmm. But then, again, they did have those bounces that went against them early on. I thought they had chances to even take a lead in the first yeah. period. And then it's a much different hockey game. So you need things to go right for you to win and even advance in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Never mind win a whole cup. So you need the bounces. You need things to go right. We saw that with Edmonton. They got the yeah. bounces for sure. I think they... They created a lot of their own luck, yeah. mm -hmm. but that was that was definitely them with with an effort, and they need to come. To, it's, the biggest challenge for Edmonton is going to be how can we how can we replicate what we did up in our home barn and do it down here because it's it's proven to be very hard to do. Even when they play well, they played well in game one. Yeah, they had chances in game one, but they didn't have those bounces. No, in, in the details though, and it goes back to I, I know that there's been a lot of talk and conversation about. Edmonton controlling and, and getting opportunities and the expected goals, all those great things. Boiler's rolling his eyes if he was on camera right now. <laughs> all those different categories that we measure it, and they've been Thanks. good. Like yeah. Edmonton's been good, but they have not been the more complete team. Yeah. I mean, no. The details of the Florida Panthers have been lights out until last game. Yeah. So and where does it go from here? I don't. I can't. This team is too good just to be like, oh, they found something here. Like the Pan. No, Panthers are dialed in. Yeah, they've been the they've been tested all year and yeah, so I expect a big pushback. I mean this yeah. this is going to be I think it's be the game of the Florida series. Back being uh, you know yeah. back into that same mode that we saw it, earlier. It's whoever on. gets to their game first and we sh we've shown that Edmonton is so good in first periods mm -hmm. and they finally got rewarded for being good in first periods and getting goals so that mitigated that third period push from Florida yeah. which is so important. So that plus minus is is huge. I think the first period we were kind of saying it. They needed a two goal lead going into the second. They got it, and they just kind of continued to roll the machine. Yeah. Don't forget the second period too. In a dangerous offensive team like Edmonton, we said it. I said it during game three. You guys agreed. I think. Yeah, I agree. With second, you always second period, the long change period can cause a lot of problems with yeah. the speed and the creativity of the Edmonton forwards. So regardless of they have a good start and then they come out and really stomp on them in the second period. Edmonton, I think Florida is going to be. <laughs> 
in for you know a heck of an uphill battle in yeah. the third. They do not want to get back on a plane to Edmonton. Oof, no, and yeah, no, that would just be wild. And it gets... <laughs> you're, you're saying more for you. That'd be uh, I wasn't. I wasn't going to go there. <laughs> you read me. We're too. I read you like, she's like, oh, I might not be matching, but we're all in sync here. Uh, it's been 12 days on the road, and it's been awesome. Uh, but speaking of bouncing back. Nobody better at doing that on two days rest anyway than Sergei Bobrovsky. Yeah. He's been lights out this postseason, five and one in six starts after um, two days rest. And so he's going to have that two days rest. He was pulled for the first time this postseason last time out after allowing five goals. And this is the guy we've talked about as playing out of this world so far this series, so far this postseason. So I just think that he writes that off as an anomaly and is right back to his Con Smythe worthy self in game five. game five. That's what I think. I mean, he didn't. If you watch all these these clips, he gets taken up by a defender, backdoor tap, and obviously these two are. He probably wants back straight shots, but again, they're coming downhill. He's a pro. He's our, you know, time Bezina winner. He's our Con Smythe winner. I don't think this changes anything. And now, if you lose another game and you go to seven, I mean, it probably hurts his chances. But I think overall. He's been great. It's a bump in the road. It happens with goaltenders, and, and Edmonton's so dynamic offensively. They're bound to get put some of these past. They're getting backdoor tappings that he was saving, and it just happened to be one of those games that everything went right for Edmonton and everything went wrong for Florida. Yeah, even the, even the McDavid goal, I think on the release, he, his his stick well, shaft got yeah. whacked, and yeah. it might have altered the course of the, where the shot was going. I don't, I don't think he was at, at fault necessarily. I think the, the whole game you can kind of toss in the trash if you're Florida. You know, it's been wildly, you know, reported and, and thoroughly reported that Bob loses a lot of weight when he plays and the every other day thing. And even even his workload during the season has been brought down a little bit so he can be fresh for these moments. It's not just two days rest. It's he only he didn't play half the game. Two and he, a half. He's going to be dialed in. I was watching him when he came out of the game. And I, I just I always watch goalies in that situation, and there's no right or wrong way probably to manage it. But I just curious what they do. You know, how sometimes you see goalies go down the tunnel, and they disappear. So maybe they one event or just get away from the crowd. Sergey Bobrovsky just very nonchalantly took his mask off, you know, got a hat from the trainer. Just he's in this arena, this crazy environment. Everyone's calling his name, trying to get under his skin. Wasn't shaken at all. Like no. wasn't shook. It wasn't like just like whatever. Yeah. All right. I noticed get back that. Too. I mean, he's yeah. he's a silent assassin, man. He's going to yeah. be he's going to be right back to Bobby yeah, once he'll, again. He'll be consistent. Again. He even gave a puck to a fan on the way out. Did you, that, that? you know what I mean? Like he, yeah. he just looks so <laughs> not calm. And no, he's ready. not. He's prepared. He he prepares. He puts the work in. He is prepared. He has this confidence from the last two postseasons. Mm-hmm. I, I think you're going to see his best. It's going to yeah. it's going to be a challenge to yeah. get by him. It was kind of just like this isn't our night as a team. What's not happening tonight? Shake it off. We'll get him in Game Five. I think that's probably got to be their mentality, and they're hoping to get it done here on home ice tomorrow night.